Today is Thursday, January 18th, Mr. Price's geometry class. We're talking about triangles, all kinds of things about triangles. Let me remind you of some of the things we've covered. Mid-segment, mid-segment, goes from midpoint to midpoint. It doesn't have to be this one, it could be the other ones over here, it could be the other ones over there. But this segment right here is half as long to the base, and the base is the longer side down here and it's also parallel to it. This side, this mid-segment, would be half as long as the other one across from it, and the same with the third one. Mid-segment, two parts, parallel, half. There's another one. It's called circumcenter. If you take the perpendicular bisectors, perpendicular bisectors, take the side, cut it in half, make it 90 degrees there, Take it in half, make it 90 degrees, take it in half, 90 degrees, you get what's called the circumcenter, which is where the circle would go around it. Circumcenter. By the way, I'm doing part of this because of the kids that maybe missed or changed classes. We've got to review a little bit, not a lot, but a little. Perpendicular bisectors meet, it's called the circumcenter. You would be able to make a circle. If we do use the protractor or the compass and make it a perfect circle on the outside, it would be on the outside, circum, around. The third one is if you take the triangle and do the angle bisectors, angle bisectors, cut them in half, well, whatever they are, bisect the angles, not perpendicular bisectors here, angle bisector. That's called the in-center because that is where a circle inside would be located. And it has some properties. This is the same distance from the sides. From here to here is the same from there to there, is the same from there to there. In center, circumcenter, mid center. Now, we talked about medians and centroids on Wednesday, uh, Tuesday and Wednesday. I won't talk about them. But there's section 5.5, five. section 5.5 five in your book. Nothing complicated, just a few things, then get to a worksheet. It's very simple, it's kind of one of those logic, like, uh, duh, all right? The biggest side is always across from the biggest angle. Whichever angle is the largest, this one looks like maybe it's not quite 90, that doesn't mean this side is 90, but the angle and the side go together. Biggest angle across from the biggest side. Smallest angle, smallest angle is across from the smallest side. We call those inequalities, by the way. In equalities, not equal. Uh, the angle, small angle, small side. Large angle, large side. How big they are? Well, that's a different question. Are the sides and the angles all equal? Or only on equilateral triangle? What about the other angle? So that's why this is not a, it's not a huge topic. It makes sense. Largest side is across from the largest angle. Smallest side is across from the smallest angle. Doesn't matter if it's obtuse. Doesn't matter if it's acute. Doesn't matter if it's right. Of course, in a right triangle, it's always across from the right angle. All right? Well. There's really not a whole lot else to talk about. This is kind of one of those easy sections, maybe. But there is one thing that has to be dealt with. And it's the side lengths. One of the first days, Monday and Tuesday of last week, I asked you for the area and the perimeter of this triangle. Area and perimeter of the triangle. Let's see. 17, 24 is the perimeter. Hmm, well, not really. It's kind of a trick question. You know why? You can't have a triangle like this. If you take a stick that's five inches long and a stick that's five in seven inches long and a stick that's 12 inches long, you couldn't make a triangle like that. You could start off with your 12 inch stick, but the five inch would exactly be here and the seven inch would exactly be there, and it wouldn't even make a triangle. What's the point? The point 
Going just about. Sorry about that. The point is you have to have two sides bigger than the third in order to get that triangle to be pointed up or down. If I had eight here, if I had an eight, that would work because eight plus five is, is 13, bigger than the 12 that we got here in the triangle. Two sides of any triangle have to be bigger than a third side or you don't even get the triangle. It doesn't work. How does that help? How does that uh, help you in your thinking? And no, most books, most worksheets, most tests aren't going to have a trick question like that, but if you had two sides of 5 and 10, here's a question you might get. If you had a two, sec two lengths of a triangle that are 5 and 10, what's the biggest possible What's the largest possible side it could be? We won't worry about decimals. Decimals, we have a whole bunch more answers. But And you might say, well, it could be anything. No, it can't be anything. 10 plus 5, the biggest side it could be is 14. If you had a side of 14, you could make a triangle out of that. That's the biggest side. What about the smallest side? Let's say I gave you 5 and 10, and I want the smallest side. Well, if I put 4 here, that won't work. 4 plus 5 is 9. That's not bigger than 10. If I put 5 here, sometimes I trick kids like this. 5, 5, and 10. Looks good, right? 5 and 5, 10. No, that doesn't look. It's not possible. This one has to be at least bigger than 5. The smallest is 6. The largest is 14. Unless you get into decimals, square roots, fractions. We're not going to worry about those. They have to be... Two sides bigger than a third side, always. That's it. Um, largest side across from the largest angle. Smallest side across from the smallest angle. Two sides have to be bigger than the third side, or you don't even get a triangle. And the answers, or the worksheets, aren't really, maybe like some of the other ones, they've got some problems. You're looking for side lengths. Which one's larger, which one's smaller. And that ends the lesson.